a lot of our recent hires were just former customers of ours who were kind of regulars and they were looking for a new job. And whether that was some of my baristas, like recruiting them, like, hey, come work with us or yeah. them just applying. It's a lot of that. And it's helpful because they already understand us from a customer's point of view. And now they can see it on the other side. It's probably not as fun now that they're on the other side of it. It's <laughs> it probably a more is. fun place <laughs> to hang out, you know, when, when you were just a customer, but Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Map It Forward, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is sadly the last episode of our five-part series with Nick Kasulf from True Brew in California and Nevada. Nick, you, you mentioned in an earlier episode of this series the best hiring practices that you guys use at True Brew. Talk to us about what they are. Absolutely, and I want to preface it with the upfront fact that this doesn't mean that it's easy for us to hire we still <laughs> struggle if you've listened to any of the other parts it's still very difficult to hire but i think it does create a sort of filtration system yeah. for trying to find the right people that will fit into your culture so this is something that took time to kind of develop and progress in our thought of how we approach hiring and this is going to sound obvious but one thing that gets overlooked, I think a lot of business owners may be guilty of this, is not carefully defining who the person, how do I put this? Like, you need to think about the role and who the ideal person is to fill that role and what characteristics and attributes that person has. So if you're filling a slot for a barista role, say, you need to really actually sit and take time and write down the characteristics of the perfect barista in your mind that's going to fit into your cafe, fill that role. And that's something surprisingly we didn't do for the first you know handful of years of being open. It was kind of more like we would do a basic interview process and they seemed likable. So we just hired mm -hmm. them, but not necessarily trying to sift for somebody that had the characteristics that were going to set them up for success in that role. And that would be a benefit to the company as a whole. So the thing that kind of we went about was, as I, as I said, like sitting down and figuring out what characteristics your ideal employee needs, whether that's a barista, manager, whatever role it is. And then you need to kind of create an interview process that sifts for those particular characteristics without being overly obvious. Uh, does that make sense? Kinda? Yeah, it, it really does. Give us some examples. So for example, the way we interview now, so I would say that what we do is we have a set of characteristics we look for, and then we, we interview them and try to find those characteristics. And what we do is we do something called behavioral based interviewing, mm -hmm. which is this sort of process of trying to naturally bring out those, the signs that that person has those characteristics without overly asking for them. So for example, in the early days, our interview process might have been something like, how do you handle yourself under a stressful situation? Like mm -hmm. this may be still a standard interview question that people ask, but it's the wrong question because someone can just say whatever they think you want to hear. Mm -hmm. And so it really doesn't give you a lot of information. Instead, what we do is all our interview questions revolve around the person giving you a actual real life story that they have to like take time to recall. And in the process of them telling you that story, they tend to divulge unwanted things that they may have not otherwise brought up. And that's your, that gives you the ability to kind of sift out the, the traits that you're looking for. So let me think of an example. Um, so instead of asking like, you know, how do you handle uh, stress or whatever, if somebody is mm -hmm. mean to you, like some, something generic, we may ask a question that's like, can you tell me at your last job, like how you handled a very angry customer? Uh, what did you do to, you know, mitigate that angry customer? Mm -hmm. And, you know, can you tell me an actual story, not just like a hypothetical? And so usually they'll think for a minute and they'll be like, yeah, at my last cafe, this person came up and was upset because their drink was cold or something. And, you know, I, I like, just remade it for them and I gave them a free cookie or something, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it is that they say, but you'll be surprised. A lot of times somebody will be like, 
oh, I, I didn't want to deal with it. So I just told the manager or whatever. And mm -hmm. so to me, that's a cue that's like, that person doesn't seem to be willing to take initiative or want to solve a problem on their own. And that'll be like something I'll write down, make a note of. And so if enough of these questions that are tailored towards figuring out the, the ideal type of employee you want to find, it's, it's been a very effective process at kind of sifting out crappy employees. And, you know, it's something that I think is useful for, for owners to do mm -hmm. as they try to hire. And this is something I've like kind of helped consult with other people about is, is kind of implementing this like employee scorecard where you, you kind of create that ideal employee. And that's surprising. I didn't do it for years, but you know, that's, that's kind of our process now. How do you, uh, how do you do that so that you don't end up with a thousand resumes that you have to sift through? Do you have a vetting process that minimizes the number of resumes you get? Because I hear a lot of people say, we advertise and I've got like a pile of resumes that I have to go through. Do you have that scenario? It depends where you advertise. And yes, I have experienced that scenario. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, at one point, again, dealing with short staffness, I was desperate and just posted ads to every job site, zip recruiter, Indeed, right. all these places. And on those places, you actually do get inundated with yeah. applications. But in my experience, they're basically all trash. Like mm -hmm. I've had, I think, one or possibly zero successful hires from those uh, job site, you know, sort of whatever you call it. What do you call those? Yep, like uh, the recruitment yeah, sites. Yeah. Recruitment sites. Um, I think possibly the reason is because it is so easy for the person to submit an application or a resume mm -hmm. to your listing that it really has no barrier to, to kind of sift, mm -hmm. you know, anybody who's truly interested in your job or in your company rather. So I don't even try that anymore. That gets rid of a lot of noise. I just mm -hmm. basically will do social media or like we'll literally just post a sign in our store and we'll just reach, try to reach our audience that already follows us, knows about us because they're more likely to be somebody that's like aligned with who we are as a company and not just somebody submitting like said 50 different jobs on Indeed and they have zero interest in you as a company. Right. And they w would most likely understand the culture of the cafe. They've probably built an affiliation with the brand and perhaps yeah. have some brand loyalty. Folks, our first on-demand workshop, How to Become a Coffee Consultant, is now available for you to learn at your own pace for just 50 euros and it comes with a certificate upon completion. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for more details. Support this podcast by supporting our sponsors. A lot of our recent hires were just former customers of ours who were kind of regulars and they were looking for a new job. And whether that was some of my baristas, like recruiting them, like, hey, come work with us or yep. them just applying. It's a lot of that. And it's helpful because they already understand us from a customer's point of view. And now they can see it on the other side. It's probably not as fun now that they're on the other side of it. It's <laughs> it probably a is. more fun place <laughs> to hang out, you know, when, when you were just a customer, but but yeah, I mean, I think that's a better way to get people aligned with who you are, who your company is. And also, I would say you could kind of lean on your staff to make recommendations. Uh, like, what would you call that? Um, like a referral type of thing, you know, because okay. they'll generally know somebody who would kind of fit. They know the work culture. They know the workflow. They're going to probably recommend a friend who would fit in with that. So I do that and we've given like a referral incentive before we give like a $200 bonus if you refer somebody and we hire them. So we've, we've dabbled in that. And yeah, those are a couple of the ways of mm. trying to get applicants. Do you find you have enough diversity? Diversity in what sense? In the sense that typically what I've found with clients who hire this way they have, it's quite homogenous. So what ends up happening is they then have a problem that happens down the road where there's not a, a, a invigoration of fresh ideas that happen or different yeah. perspectives that look at things. Do you know where I'm coming from with this? Yeah, I do. And I think definitely that's a potential problem where you mm -hmm. create like a closed loop e ecosystem if it's all just friends hiring friends. Yeah. I think... 
we try to actively mitigate that like you know, I have pretty strong opinions about a lot of things, but I, no, I like actively. No, yeah. Nick, I don't. <laughs> folks, if you want to know what, why I'm being so sarcastic, just go and follow Nick on social media. We'll have some links. It's worth you not missing this. Uh, but please, <laughs> if you're delicate with regards to politics, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I have, you know, I have some strong opinions, but that being said i i hire people who are on complete opposite ends of spectrums uh -huh. from me ideologically and i love them and they're fantastic people and you know if a few of them are listening they'll know that we have our differences <laughs> but you know I, I they're great to work with they're yeah you know great great assets to our company um so yeah it's not like yeah you have to be slightly mindful of it um to make right. sure you're not creating that bubble because I, I don't necessarily think that's ideal. I think a diversity of of thought and just cultures is is beneficial. And right. And and I even mean in coffee, like let's remove the the social kind of aspect of it. But people who have different perspectives when it comes to, you know, you and I off air were talking about uh, different fermentation um, approaches to to processing coffee and people have different ideas of should you drink experimental processing coffees or should we offer them to our customers should we you know all of these different things um, when you hire people who only bring forth their friends they tend to have very similar opinions when it comes to coffee as well do you guys uh, suffer at at that at all or are most of the people that you're hiring fairly new to coffee yeah so because i don't put coffee experience as like a high okay uh thing i look for when i'm yeah. hiring i i really hire more for personality fit and for overall character attributes like mm -hmm. somebody is a you know a willing learner or a, you know a hard worker or whatever someone resilient mm -hmm. things like that I really actually put coffee as kind of low on the totem pole of things I'm looking for. And I found it's helpful in the sense of you don't get a lot of kind of fairy baristas who float around <laughs> the different shops for three months. And, you know, they have a lot of entrenched habits and yeah. uh, strong opinions. And, you know, I want to get somebody that's going to do it the way I teach them. <laughs> and like it, sometimes well, it could be hard to, yeah. to bring somebody in who's had 10 different coffee jobs and you try to tell them we're going to steam our thing this way or we're going to roast our coffee this way and they're going to be like well this shop did it this way but so I don't think we suffer from that too much right uh I would say I do see a lot of shops that do where you get like the super hardcore coffee nerds who are you know have their uh monitors out and analyzing you know their cup <laughs> before they drink it and they hire all their friends and you have this closed loop cult. where all of a sudden you have a, yeah, a, a shop that, this cult of uh, <laughs> all these extremely like ultra fine that are making zero coffees, money <laughs> you know yeah it's it that i was talking about that recently but it's like so for me as like trying to trying to run a successful business like i'm trying to appeal to my customer base and and i kind of know what their tastes are and we yeah. do have a diverse range of customers so we do have our light roast ethiopians and naturals and things that are more you know specialty but then mm -hmm. i have my dark roast that's you know more roasty and nutty and you know 80 percent of your customers may like that and you may be alienating them if you're very um, adamant that you only serve the coffee a particular way and it's just to me it's silly because it's just a food it's it's so subjective like yeah it's like telling somebody you have to eat your you know your salad this way versus this way it's like you know i think we forget that coffee is a food that's being consumed at the end of the day and there's a degree of personal subjectivity to it yeah well that's why you've got almost four cafes that are all doing very well and you're growing at a slow pace but you're growing sustainably because you have a very measured and responsible and kind of grounded approach to the way that you're doing it and i'm proud to call you my friend and i'm proud to call you a colleague <laughs> and um it's been a joy for me to watch you grow this brand over you know you and your mom grow this brand over an extended yeah, period we're about of time to hit 10 years yeah i know it's months. wild it's really really wild i may need some consulting work soon so we'll yeah talk. Well, always um i 
want you to tell us where people can find you and True Brew because people should not miss out on your political opinions. It's really, really fun to watch you stir the pot with your people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm on Instagram, uh, Barista underscore Nick. You can probably tag it or whatever. Easier yeah, we'll to, put it in the show notes. And, and our company, we have uh, True Brew, at True Brew Coffee on Instagram. It's spelled kind of weird, so you can you know, look at we'll the, the notes to be the, the, yeah. get the proper spelling. Uh, yeah. And just, you know, just the standard online ecosystem website yep. and social media, Perfect. but we exist there in the digital world. And uh, True Brew is in uh, California in OC, as well as in Nevada. Uh, so... Nevada near Las Vegas. So if you're Perfect. ever traveling to Las Vegas for something, we're just 10 minutes from the strip over in some nice little suburb there called Henderson. And we're relatively new there, but the shop's doing well and awesome. you know, finding its way into the community. So, you know, you can check us out there. Amazing. Nick, thanks for a great series. Uh, you never disappoint in a conversation. I love our conversations and I hope that there's many more to come on the podcast. So I hope you come back. Thanks for having me, Lee. Good talking. My pleasure. Will you uh, sign the episode off? This one? Yeah. Peace, love, and peanut butter. Word. Have an amazing <laughs> rest of your day, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.